Man, I want to put my eyes on the Bible instead of the news media. This tastes a lot better than that fear that they're trying to feed me. I don't want to eat the food of demons. I want to eat the bread of life, for it is written, Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Bible says again, a man is a man um, is what he thinks. And what a man thinks is People what he thinks. People are filling their mind with anger and hatred coming from another man's mouth towards another man. So what are they going to become? Angry, bitter, hateful. A man is what he thinks, and what he thinks is what he eats. If you eat anger and you like it, you're going to become angry. If you eat gossip and you like it, you're going to be a gossiper. If you eat lust if, and you like it, you watch that porno, you're going to be a fornicator. So you say, I'm a sinner? What were you eating? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have been eating junk at one point in our lives, but no more. No more. Give it up. Give up that spiritual junk. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in His name to all nations. Let us ask God to strangely warm our hearts and set our souls on fire. Okay. Uh, Lucas, the book of Luke, chapter 12. Capitulo 12, verso 4 y 5. Verses, uh, chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Luke chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. And we stand in honor of the Lord's word. And I say unto you, my friends... Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Beautiful Holy Spirit, we thank you. You are the head pastor here. Please teach us your perfect wisdom and understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You can see, you can, you can sit if you want. So Jesus says, fear not man that has power to kill the body, but fear the one who has the power to destroy soul in hellfire. So we got a lot of people now in the world today, in this pandemic, this fear has spread all over the world. There's fear all over. Countries all over the world living in fear of catching the coronavirus. The government wants people to be aware while also being in fear because the government and, and, and the news media wants people to be aware and also afraid so that they take it seriously. They're using fear. The, 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 the news media wants to use fear to keep people's attention glued on. And, that, and, and the Bible says what a man thinks he is. And what you feed your mind, you will become it according to what the Bible teaches. Because if you feed your mind these thoughts and what a, what a man thinks he is, and you keep thinking on it, you're going to become that thought. If you keep eating and feeding your brain from that news media fear, you're going to become fearful. If you keep feeding your brain anxiety... You're going to become anxietal. Remember, the Bible says what a man thinks he is. That's in the Proverbs. So who wants you to be fearful? God or the devil? 2 Timothy 1.7. The Bible says that God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Does a sound mind keep eating junk? Does a sound mind keep watching that news media and keep eating fear? Is that a sound mind? Hey, I'm not perfect. This message goes for me too. This message goes for me as well, not just you. We all need to be careful what we feed our mind. Because what a man thinks he is. And what is a man going to think? Whatever he feeds his mind. If you feed your mind things of the flesh, 
you will walk in the flesh. Galatians 5.16 says, walk in the spirit, not the flesh. For the flesh wages war with the spirit and the spirit with the flesh. When you're walking in the spirit, do you ever have fear? Did Stephen have fear in Acts chapter 7? When he went out to preach God's word with power and authority? And he said to the people, you stiff-necked murderers, you always resist the Holy Spirit, Stephen said. And it says that the crowd got so mad at him, they stoned him to death. But it also says that Stephen was speaking and the Holy Spirit was on him. He wasn't afraid when he was full of the Holy Spirit. When you're walking in the Holy Spirit, fear has to go. When you're walking in the flesh, you're going to reap the fruit of the flesh. And so the, 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 the enemy wants to use the news media to instill fear in people. Because the more people are afraid watching the news media about the coronavirus, the more people are afraid, the longer they're going to be glued to that TV, the greater their ratings, the more money they make on advertisements. The enemy is the God of this world, the Bible says. And the enemy wants people living in anxiety and fear. And I'm telling you today, my friends, if you do not believe in demonic spirits that are influencing people, that are influencing the social media, the news media, even, unfortunately, some government leaders, if you don't, but because the, even, even the Bible teaches in the Old Testament, the devil was literally possessing some kings, the prince of Persia. And then you read Ezekiel chapter 28. The devil can get inside of some people. The devil got inside of even Judas to do the job, to betray Jesus. And when the devil took Jesus up to the mountain, the devil said, if you bow your knee to me, Jesus, I'll give you all these kingdoms. How could the devil give those kingdoms unless the devil has power over them? Remember, the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. If you don't think that the devil is in governments worldwide, you are, you are deceived, my friends. That's why Jesus says, be awake. Now, does that mean we get angry? No, we love government. We respect and follow government. Only when it lines up with the Bible. That's why Peter says in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than man when it came to the governing authority. Because the government wanted them to do something that conflicted with the will of God. And when the Antichrist comes and wants to have people take the mark of the beast, are we going to have to obey that government leader? The Bible says that if anyone takes the mark of the beast, he shall be damned. So we have to understand, we love government, we love the leaders, we pray God give them wisdom and bless them, we obey the laws of the land, but when they start breaking the laws and say we can't have church and live in fear, we say no to the enemy's lie. We say no because we want to please God's will over any man. Because we fear God. Remember, we just read it, Luke chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Jesus says, fear not man that has the power to destroy your body, but fear the one who has the power to cast your soul in hell. We're not afraid of the coronavirus that can kill the body. What can the coronavirus do to your soul? Jesus says, fear the one who has the power to cast your soul in hell. Can the coronavirus cast your soul in hell? Yes or no? No. So who has that power? The Almighty God. Who do we fear? Almighty God. And it is written in the Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's not the end of wisdom. It does not say the grace of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It does not say the love of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It does not say the peace of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why? When you realize you have to fear God, this thing right here hits the ground. That's called you getting humble. And you're, when you're humble, suddenly you're going to take orders from the Master. And you're going to repent and seek to obey Him. And that's the beginning step of wisdom. Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. And He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom, Mark 1.14.
The gospel of the kingdom. What's the kingdom? Holy, perfect. Jesus preached holiness. Jesus preached the perfection of God. Because God's perfect. And God's holy. And yeah, God's good. And yeah, God's love. And we want to remember the other side of the Lord. The side that, that cannot be neglected. The side that cannot be forgotten. The side that cannot be escaped. Because Jesus came on this earth with mercy and grace. And He wants to, and He, he will not reject anyone that comes to Him. He is willing to receive because it is written that He died for all man, Hebrews 2.9. And that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus died for everybody who believes on Him. But what does that word mean? Because the Bible also says even the devil believes in Jesus. Does that mean the devil's going to heaven? No. When you really believe in Jesus, because a lot of people can say, I believe in Jesus. When you really believe in Jesus, you obey Jesus. When you really believe the Word of God, you obey the Word of God. When you really believe what the Scripture says, you will do what the Scripture says. That's what the Bible says, be a doer of the Word, not a hearer only. And Jesus says, Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, only those that do the will of my Father. What's the will of the Father? Hebrews 10, 25. Do not forsake the weekly gathering. So we're here, Father, because we love you. Because Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. And if you keep my commandments, then you shall stay in my love, Jesus says. John 15, 10. If we keep his commandments, then we stay in his love. We have to obey God, my friends. And it's not easy. But again, Jesus came to tell us and reiterate the point. Fear the one who has the power to cast your soul into hell. We need to take our focus off of what the news media and what the devil is trying to put in people's minds of fear, anxiety, and worry. And focus on the godly fear. Focusing on fearing the Lord. And walking in the fear of the Lord. Why? Because that is, that is the true righteousness. Because Jesus taught that Jesus always obeyed the Father perfectly. Even to the shedding of His pure, holy blood. And Jesus says, follow me. Matthew 16, 24. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross daily and follow Peter? No. Follow this religion? No. Follow the Pope? No. Follow my apostles? No. Follow me, Jesus says. We follow Jesus. No man, no religion. We answer to the King of Kings. He's not a swear word. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. And He's coming back. And you know, it's amazing to me how people can get prepared for the coronavirus. They'll go to the grocery stores. They'll go and buy all the toilet paper all the, off the shelves. And they'll start preparing for some kind of apocalypse or economic collapse, but you tell them Jesus is coming, they ain't preparing. You tell the people that there's this virus that can kill the body, but it can do nothing to your soul. It doesn't have the power over your soul. And people will run to the grocery stores. They'll run to get the mask. They'll run to get hand sanitizer. They'll pray for a vaccine. Suddenly, there's a lot of people now around the world thinking about God. Suddenly, a lot more people are receptive to hearing about God. I see those windows are still open. They're not shut. That tells me something, too. Because if you didn't want to hear it, you'd close them by now. You guys don't see those apartment uh, windows are still cracked open. I see a bunch of them. A lot of people are suddenly willing to listen to God. Even the atheists are getting humbled by this pandemic. I think God knows what he's doing. I think God allowed this virus so he could see some things from his throne. His eyes are beholding all the spots of the earth, the psalm says. There's nothing that those eyes on the throne of God don't see. He sees everything. Jesus says, Matthew 6, 6, go in your room, close the door, pray to your father. 
and your Father who sees what you do in secret shall reward you openly. God sees everything even in the secret. God even sees what's going on in the spiritual realm. God knows how many demons there are right now in the air. God knows how many demons could be in some people. God knows. He sees everything. God even knows how many hairs are on the head of a demon. If they even have it. I don't know. But God knows. He knows. You can't fool God. I can't fool God. You can fool me. I can fool you. But you can't fool God. Hallelujah. We have to be humble. Jesus says, Matthew 18, 4, Humble yourself as a little child, otherwise you shall not see the kingdom of God. You know, maybe half the time when Jesus talks about heaven, because remember, he said, Mark 1, 14, I come preaching the kingdom of God. Maybe about half the time, I don't know exactly, but a lot of it. He's warning us who's not going to be allowed in. I take that very seriously from the Lord. I think He really came on this earth. One of the reasons, not just to die for our sins. We thank the Lord He did. He shed His blood. He gave up His throne in heaven 33 years to come down. But another reason that He came was to teach us the perfect faith. Revelation 12, 14 says the faith of Jesus. What was the faith of Jesus? Was Jesus a Catholic? No? Jesus? You mean Jesus didn't take little... He was a carpenter, right? Jesus could have taken little statues, uh, carved out little statues of Moses from wood and handed it to his apostles. Here, here, have this. He could have made some prayer beads and given them prayer beads. You know, he's a carpenter. He could have made some prayer beads. He could have, he could have said, everyone, here, we're going to find the artist of the town of Bethlehem. Hey, make sure they paint a good picture of me and, and make sure you give pictures of me. Every Jesus didn't teach any of this. So what was his faith? Jesus says, John 8, 29, the Father has not left me alone because I always do those things that please Him. And if He says, follow me, that means we have to do the things that please the Father. Are we always doing the things that please the Father? Wow, that's really hard. I'm not there yet. You're not there yet. But does that mean we get an excuse? Did Jesus die so suddenly on the cross we have an excuse to not do it? No. No? no? The grace of God manifests on the cross. The grace of God. Jesus came full of grace, it says. And we're saved by grace through faith. This is the gift of God. Salvation. Not of works, lest any man should boast. What's the grace? We're alive right now. We're under grace now. No longer the law of the Old Testament. And the works that Paul, Apostle Paul talks about in the New Testament, he's referring almost always to the, to, the, to the works of the Old Testament law. But we're under a new covenant, Jesus says, under His blood, walking in the Spirit, doing the things that please the Father. Well, those aren't the things that Paul condemns. Those are the things we're commanded. For Hebrews 5.9 says salvation is for those who obey Jesus. And here's the grace. We're hearing this now. That our ears are working, that our lungs and hearts working, that we're alive. Because under the Old Testament law, you sin, you're dead. But now we're under grace. For what reason? What's the reason? There's a reason. What's the reason? To continue in sin? To continue in disobedience to the Lord? No, to repent. That's the purpose. That's why God gives His grace. He wants us to repent. What does that mean to repent? What does it mean? Again, we look to Jesus. I don't look to any man. I look to Jesus. What does Jesus define repentance as? He says, the men of Nineveh, they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And if you read Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, it says that they turned from their wicked ways. That's how Jesus defines repentance. Turning from your wicked ways. Because the wages of sin is death. And your wicked ways will kill you. Because you didn't fear the one who then will take your soul and cast it into hell if you die in that sin.
So that repentance means you change your mind and your deeds. That's why Paul even says, the same Paul who preached that, that, that we're saved by grace also says this, nor fornicators, nor drunkards, nor liars, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals shall inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. If you die in these sins, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because you're not doing the will of the Father, Matthew 7, 21. Because the will of the Father is not that you do sin, but that you do obedience for it as a sacrifice to God that He will accept. And it's not that you obey yourself in self-righteousness, but that you obey His Son. That's what He says in Matthew 17, 5. This is my Son. Hear Him. Which means obey Him. Because again, a true believer is not one who just hears the Word, but does it. That's real living faith. And then you will get the Holy Spirit when you obey God. Acts chapter 5 verse 32 says, God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Man, I want to put my eyes on the Bible instead of the news media. This tastes a lot better than that fear that they're trying to feed me. I don't want to eat the food of demons. I want to eat the bread of life, for it is written, Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So if you eat evil knowledge, you will be an evil person. If you eat lies, you will be a liar. If you eat uh, uh, gossip and you like gossip, you like to hear gossip, you will become a gossiper. If you, eat, if you eat anger, unrighteous anger, you will become an unrighteous anger. You'll even be a murderer, Jesus says. What are you eating, my friends? If you eat adultery, you become an adulterer. If you watch pornography, you eat pornography, you become a fornicator. Fornicators cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And you may say, how can I overcome these sins? Well, you like that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. What does that mean? You can do all things except giving up your sin, right? No. What kind of faith is that? That's a dead faith. That's not living faith. James chapter 2. Read it. Jesus says, John 8, 39, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. Abraham feared God, wanted to obey God. You see, my friends, so I, uh, I can't remember really, uh, man, I should say this. I barely watch the news now. If I watch it, it's for a few minutes every couple days just to get the general info I'm not sitting there glued on TV which I don't even I don't even watch TV I should say the computer I have a lot I have a computer but uh, I don't sit there eating the fear from the news media eating that fear and then becoming fearful and then living off that fear I read the Word of God Because the Word of God, the last time I checked, my Bible says before the word Bible, holy. I eat holiness. Do you eat holiness? Uh, we have to eat it every day, Jesus says, if you want to live forever. What are you feeding your soul? What are you feeding your spirit? What are you feeding it? It's very important, my friends. People are so worried. They're, they're going to the grocery stores. I look in the grocery store. Almost all the orange juice is gone. We're worried about our physical health. We're worried about getting the virus and trying to prevent the virus and keeping our physical body nice and healthy. What about the spirit? What about your soul? We'll go to the, we're so worried about our physical health. We'll go to the grocery store and we'll buy all the rubbing alcohol, all the Clorox wipes, all the hand sanitizer. Because we're scared of the coronavirus. Why don't you invest in going to the store and getting a Bible off the shelf? 
Why don't you worry about your spiritual health too? Why not? Those windows are still open. Praise God. God bless you. And what really saddens me, what really saddens me the most is the attitude of a lot of believers during this whole time because I believe another reason that God allowed this coronavirus was to expose a lot of so-called Christians to show that maybe they need to examine themselves as the Bible says by Apostle Paul because really Jesus says worse tribulations are going to come and when those tribulations come Jesus says, will I find faith on the earth? And if I'm walking around now too scared to put my hand on somebody that wants prayer, what on earth makes me think when the Antichrist comes that I'm going to reject the mark of the beast and have my head cut off for Jesus? Because it says that the Antichrist in Revelation 13, people's heads will be cut off who reject the mark. And it says those are the saints. I think God, one of the reasons again to allow this virus is to try and wake up the Christians. Are you really, really ready? Are you really, really ready to, as it says, I believe in the book of Hebrews, to resist temptation unto blood, as Jesus did. His blood was shed to obey the Father perfectly. Are we willing to lose our blood to death in order to obey the Word of God to our last breath? I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that for you. And I'm not condemning pastors or Christians. I'm bringing this point so that we think about it and really examine ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. We have to. We have to. Um, it disappoints me that so many, if so many churches and pastors are willing to just, just so easily, so quietly, just, just, just shut down their church and do online service only. I mean, when the real tribulation comes, what's next? I believe the enemy just saw how easy it was to manipulate the flock of God through this coronavirus. And I know it's not easy to hear. It's very hard to hear. But there's a lot of things Jesus says in the Gospels that aren't easy to hear. He said in John chapter 6, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And it says his disciples, a lot of them, didn't understand that, and they walked away. And Jesus didn't go after them and try to explain himself and try to say, hey guys, wait, 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 here's what I meant by that. Because he saw their pride. They didn't want to understand what he meant. And he let them go. Because he knew that their heart wasn't after him. That's why he says, seek me with all your heart. You will find me. They weren't seeking him with all their heart. They were holding some of it back. And Jesus says, Matthew 16, 25, he who tries to save his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Are we really willing to resist temptation unto blood and lose our will? That's what it means. When he says lose your life, it doesn't mean literally. It means you're willing to give up your will in order to submit to God's will, which is unbelievably difficult. But is it mandatory or no? He who does the will of my Father, these are the ones that shall see the kingdom of God. Matthew 7, 21. He who does the will of himself, no, my Father. It's not easy, but guess what? When you submit to God, how can you then not really truly have peace knowing you're walking in the will of your Maker? Knowing that you can pray to your Father and He will help you. Knowing that you are building a connection with God and you're calling Him Father and He starts to speak to you and He starts to deal with you as you continue to obey Him, walking in the fear of the Lord, repenting of your sins and, and obeying Him more and more, more and more, seeking Him more and more and you're finding Him more and more. 
As you're seeking God more and more through your repentance and your obedience, you're finding Him more and more. And you're growing in wisdom more and more. And you're growing in His love more and more. And you're growing in His mercy more and more. And He starts changing you. And He starts transforming you. And suddenly the things that you were doing before, you suddenly start to hate them more and more. You start to hate those things, those sins you started, you used to love. You start to hate them more and more. I used to smoke cigarettes. I can't stand the smell of cigarettes now. I used to love it. Those thoughts, you you know why? Because a man is what he thinks. And I used to feed myself the junk. So I used to think like junk. But now, your mind can be washed by the word. And it will turn from junk into gold. Being refined more and more and more through trials. The testing of one's faith. For it is a big blessing, though it's not easy. But God wants to turn you from junk into gold, my friends. But you have a choice. You got to throw down that cigarette. You got to throw down that man. Just We had a man here just throw out all his tobacco in the garbage can. You can't just say, yup, while you keep the cigarette in your mouth. You can't just say, yup, while you keep buying the marijuana and the booze. You got to cut your hand off, Jesus says, if you want to go to heaven. You got to give it, you got to be willing to give it up. You can't keep it. He who tries to save his life shall lose it. He who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 16, 25. I follow Jesus, my friends. Who do you follow? We follow what he says and we obey. Because he's perfect. His wisdom's perfect. And when you feed your mind perfect wisdom, guess what you're gonna guess what you're gonna start becoming? Wise. A man is what he thinks, and what he thinks is what he eats. So if you start eating the word of God, start reading and obeying the word of God. Because reading it's not enough. You have to actually put it into practice. How many people know love your neighbor as yourself? But then they kill their neighbor with cancer with their cigarettes. What kind of love is that? That's not love. But they know it. So they're not really eating it. They eat it when they read it, but then when you don't do it, you're spitting it out. And Jesus says, people like this, he will spit out of his mouth too. Revelation chapter 3 verse 16. So my friends, you can come right now. And give your life to Jesus. You can come right now and say, enough is enough. I want to go to heaven. I want to turn from my sin. You can lay down. The man took his tobacco and he laid it down at this, you know, spiritual altar, so to speak. And if you do that, God will forgive you. If you're real, God will have mercy on you. Jesus says, he who denies me before men, I shall deny him before my angels in heaven. How much more will he accept you if you accept him before men? You want to come, get saved, go to heaven? You got to repent. Come and accept Jesus. And I'll pray for you. We'll pray together right now. We can pray right now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Remember, he who denies me before men, I shall deny him before my angels in heaven. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. This is your soul at stake, my friends. We love you and care for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you need prayer, come. And we can pray. If you want to give your life to Christ, come. And give your life to Christ. If you want prayer, you can come right now and receive prayer. You want to give up give up your sin. You got to be real with God. You can't play games with God. You got to be real with God. If you want to you want to get accept Jesus, you can come around right now and pray to accept Jesus. You can accept Jesus and have beautiful life forever. Forever and ever in heaven. You can say, enough is enough, Lord. I want to obey you, live in your will. Living in the will of God is the best plan for your life. Doesn't mean that it's easy. The best plan for your life does not mean it's always easy. It's going to be very hard. That's why Jesus says, the path to heaven is narrow. Few find it. That means it's not easy because the path to hell, he says, Matthew 7, 13, 14, is wide. Many are on it. Most people are on the wide path to hell because they're dead in their sins. 
Because they say, I believe in Jesus, but their actions or lack thereof prove otherwise. Because you're still staying in your sin. But you can have beautiful life eternal. You can walk the streets of gold. You can be filled with living water. You can be filled with the power from on high, Acts 1 8. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit and overcome. You can become an overcomer, walking in victory. But instead, Jesus says, He who sins is a slave of sin. And so I see, unfortunately, a lot of people, they're slaves to cigarettes. They obey their master. When the cigarette says, it's time for me to come in your mouth again, it's time for me to come again, and they light up another one. And then they're slaves to the alcohol. The alcohol says, it's time for me to get in that belly, and they'll listen to the alcohol. Because they're a slave to the sin. It's their master. The slave, they're slaves to pornography. It's their master. They have to obey their urge, the spirit of lust. But you can be delivered from those spirits of addiction. If there's a stronghold, a spirit in you, Jesus says to he who, uh, whom the Son delivers, he shall be delivered. And if you really believe in Jesus, you, can believe, you should believe that you can be delivered. You should believe that you can be delivered. It's not enough to just say, I believe, and then you continue in the sin. That's not a true living belief. That's not a living faith. It's a false faith with a false grace. But the real grace is that you heard this right now and that you are given the opportunity right now. For faith comes by hearing the Word of God and how shall they hear without a preacher, it says. And you can give your life to the Lord and you can declare Him as the Lord of your life, no more sin, and you can renounce your sin with witnesses and the angels in heaven will rejoice this is what matters more. So are people really preparing for their eternity? Jesus is coming soon. How many people came? But you tell them there's a pandemic, they're running to their toilet paper. They're running to the hand sanitizer. They're preparing for the pandemic. They're preparing for coronavirus. They're preparing to isolate and social distance. Why don't you prepare to sin distance right now? Distance yourself from your sin. Take your alcohol, throw it in quarantine forever. Take your cigarettes, throw it in quarantine forever. Don't quarantine faith. Don't quarantine obedience to God. Don't quarantine holiness. Don't quarantine your true belief. They're going to run to the stores. They run to the stores, they buy everything off the shelf that they need. The alcohol, the rubbing alcohol, the hand sanitizer, toilet paper, Clorox wipes. The coronavirus is coming soon, everyone's out there. Jesus is coming soon, crickets. Crickets. Nada, nothing. Why? Because the mind has been eating junk. Bible says again, a man is, a man um, is what he thinks, and what a man thinks is what he eats. And if you've been eating the wrong knowledge, if you're listening to dirty music, if you're watching dirty things, if you're watching bad Hollywood movies, if you're watching the fear tactic, fear instilling demonic news media that's full of lies. Jesus says the devil's the father of lies. That's proof right there. And it's full of lies because it's deceptive. It's full of deception. I was at a family member's house and I watched not even one minute of CNN the other night. Not even one minute. And the man was on there. He has his own segment just to slam President Trump. He just bashes President Trump, constantly criticizing and hammering the president. I'm thinking, this is news? This is news? Listening to another man's opinion is news? People are filling their mind with anger and hatred coming from another man's mouth towards another man. So what are they going to become? Angry, bitter, hateful. A man is what he thinks, and what he thinks is what he eats. If you eat anger and you like it, you're going to become angry. If you eat gossip and you like it, you're going to be a gossiper. If you eat lust if, and you like it, you watch that porno, you're going to be a fornicator. So you say, I'm a sinner? 
What were you eating? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have been eating junk at one point in our lives, but no more. No more. Give it up. Give up that spiritual junk. Geo. 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 Lost. So glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. If anybody needs prayer, you can come up, receive prayer. We love you. I know the message is tough, but it needs to be. It needs to be. It's not an easy message, right? If it was easy, going to heaven would be easy, but it's a narrow path, which means it's not easy. Narrow. You know what narrow means? It means you got to watch your balance. you got to be very careful. Very careful. You know what a wide path is? Close your eyes backwards. You ain't going to fall no matter what. It's a wide path. It's easy. Many are on it, Jesus says. To eternal destruction. So my friends and Christians, don't be scared of the enemy. Don't be scared of sickness. Don't be scared of death. Fear not those things that has power to kill the body. But I say unto you this, fear the one who has power to, after killing the body, has power to cast soul into hell fire. Luke 12, 5. Amen. Amen.